Hello and welcome to Brands Hatch as we get set for rounds five and six of TCR UK. And as the championship continues to grow this season, we welcome a couple of new drivers onto the grid this weekend. But it's Dan Lloyd that remains to be the driver to beat as he proved once again at Knock Hill last time out. We are racing for round number three of the TCR UK Championship and the cars launch over the hill down towards Turn 1. Dan Lloyd makes a good start and Ollie Taylor, as predicted with the dry side of the road, gets into second place ahead of Aidan Moffat. So Lloyd leads into the hairpin. Ollie Taylor loses it through the left hand. He's all over the grass. Moffat will go through. Beckman will go through. And right on cue, that was the mistake that Aidan Moffat was looking for. And well and truly stuck in the gravel is Lewis Kent. Josh Price has got himself up into second place. There's more contact there between Andreas Beckman and Ollie Taylor. And Josh Price, through it all, has come past the pair of them. It's a Honda Civic battle for second place. And Josh Price is wide at the hair, but he's on the dirty side of the road. And Taylor's going to go through. He's going to lean on Price, and he does get second place back. Dan Lloyd wins round number three of the TCR UK Championship. Ollie Taylor comes home second and Josh Price will be third, and what a battle those two have. Round number four of TCR UK is go! It's a good start by Walkinshaw. Lewis Kent again makes a really good start. He's up alongside Daryl Wilson for second place. He's ahead into second place. So it's Walkinshaw from Kent, the top two, and Lewis already into the back of Walkinshaw, who's sideways. Oh, right in front of the pack. Lewis Kent up the inside of him, but that was very physical indeed. Look at Josh Price going charging around the outside as well. Two wheels on the grass for Josh Price, but Lewis Kent has the race lead. Price for second, up the inside of Walker Jaw. Look at the cars dancing around under braking, and it will be Josh Price that goes through. Lewis Kent's season just isn't getting going, really, is it? Right, Dan Lloyd is with Josh Price now. He has fought the race leader. He's gone through. Dan Powder, did he do that? Dan Lloyd has gone through. Dan Lloyd is leading the race. Sells the dummy, makes Jessica think he's not going to go forward, and then launches up the inside. Oh, Jessica turns in, though. Oh, no, there's contact, and they're both off. Both out wide. Is there damage done to Taylor's car? I think there is. Ollie Taylor, this is big, big drama as far as one of our championship contenders are concerned. And this is a very familiar sight indeed. Four wins from four for West Coast Racing, and Dan Lloyd extends his championship lead. Just a few tenths of a second could be the difference between several rows in the grid here at Brands Hatch, as yesterday's qualifying session proved. Once again, Dan Lloyd seizing pole position three tenths of a second ahead of Ollie Taylor, who himself was only three thousandths of a second ahead of Andreas Beckman. Lewis Kent, Jessica Beckman, and then Josh Price completed that top six. And here's what the top three had to say after that intense qualifying. People say it looks easy, but it's never easy. Um, we got there right at the end. The car wasn't handling uh, like we expected it would. Uh, it took a bit of work throughout the session, but um, yeah, got it together at the end. Pleased with that. It was a good quali. First time out in the new car. Uh, yeah, fantastic. The handling characteristics are slightly different to the old cars, more stable. Uh, and to be honest, I'm a bit more comfortable in it. And some of the corners here at Brands, where they're sort of quite fast entry, blind corners, off camber, I'm certainly more comfortable in the car, throwing it in at high speeds um, than what I would have been in the old one. So, yeah, a bit of an advantage to me. It was really good qualifying. I'm really glad with the third place. It was really good, I think. A podium, it would be really nice, I think. Yeah, I think we have a really good car. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I think a podium, it, it's my goal for tomorrow, so. It's time to hand over to our race commentator to talk you through the first race of the day. 30 minutes of racing, about to get underway here from Brands Hatch. Round number five is go. Who makes the start for the front row of the grid? Looks like a fairly even one, but Taylor is alongside. Ollie Taylor is challenging for the race lead down towards Paddock Gilbert, and he gets it. Ollie Taylor takes the race lead into Paddock, and he will lead Dan Lloyd out down the hill towards Druid. Jinx across to the right to defend, and he holds off the race lead. So Taylor leads. Lloyd second, but Lewis Kent is going up the inside as well now. Dan Lloyd, or oh, contact. Contact from Lewis Kent into the back of Dan Lloyd's car, and again, bang, bang. This is all allowing Ollie Taylor to escape. Lloyd is being assaulted left, right and centre. Kent now gets into the side of Andreas Beckman as well, who's sideways. Kent over onto the grass. It's all kicked off at the start of this race. Josh Price is in the mix as well. More contact. Oh, Beckman goes around in front of the pack. Let's have the all avoid and they do. No! Howard Fuller's off. Howard Fuller and Finley Crocker tangle. And finally, we have a car properly off the road. And unfortunately, it is Howard Fuller. But how on earth that didn't wipe out half the field, I will never know.
Ollie Taylor leads at the end of the opening lap. Dan Lloyd is second, a huge gap back to somehow still Lewis Kent there in third position. Josh Price is fourth, Jessica Beckman is fifth, and Andreas Beckman rather wound up after all of that, I'd imagine, is down in sixth place. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a real fight on our hands. Ollie Taylor versus Dan Lloyd. Ollie said that if he could get in front of Dan, he really felt that he could get his elbows out and become the first different winner in the season. Remember, Dan has won all four races so far this year. Down towards the left-hander at Surtees, 100 miles an hour the apex through this left-hander. It's a daunting corner, and then hard on the brakes, turning through the right. It's bumpy, it's uphill, and then the road drops away dramatically on the exit of the corner, and in front-wheel drive touring cars, particularly as the tyres start to go away, understeer becomes a real issue at that part of the circuit. Now, Dan Lloyd is an awful lot closer this time as we make our way up towards Paddock Hill Bend. Taylor knows it, drives down the middle of the road there. That's the defensive line into Paddock, but that can then slow you down on the exit, and that's what Dan Lloyd is hoping for as he tries to carry more speed up the hill towards Druid. But so far, at least, Ollie Taylor has been defending well. Billy Crocker now sets the fastest lap of the race, back in seventh position as he continues his pursuit of Jessica and Andreas Beckman. Of course, Ollie Taylor, as he starts defending, he is holding both himself and Dan Lloyd up. They were four tenths slower than Lewis Kent to Josh Price behind him on the previous lap, and Lewis is only 1.6 back. There is Lewis, look, the orange and white Hyundai. Now, that could actually benefit Ollie Taylor, because if you can back Dan Lloyd up... Oh, Lloyd at the inside! Out of absolutely nowhere! Dan Lloyd goes for the race lead. There's a bit of contact. He leans on Ollie Taylor, and he goes back through. So, Dan Lloyd, forget what I was about to say about Ollie Taylor hanging on to the race lead. Dan Lloyd has got the lead back, and he will want to make good his escape. Here's a replay. Dan Lloyd was an absolute country mile back, and that uh, that meant that Ollie Taylor didn't feel that he had to defend, but in the end, it turned out he did, and that was a lovely clean move. A tiny bit of paint traded, but that was just a good, firm, but fair move. Yeah, that's a shame. The McGann, well, this is a project very much in its infancy, and uh, Alex competing in TCR Germany predominantly this year with the McGann TCR car. Five second time penalty already for exceeding track limits for Josh Price in fourth position. Josh Price has already been given a five second time penalty. Now, this is the battle for sixth position. Andreas Beckman, Stuart Lyons, and Finley Crocker. Now, there's a, a crowd of exciting drivers to watch. Oh, Andreas Beckman and Stuart Lyons finally. Stuart's prized the door open. There was a bit of a mistake there from Andreas down at Graham Hill Bend. Andreas tries to close the door. It's certain he's can't do it, and Finley Crocker's going to follow him through. Great opportunistic driving there from Finley Crocker to gain a place out of all of that. He read the situation brilliantly well. Stuart Lyons just had superior traction coming out of Graham Hill Bend, got up the inside of Andreas, and the rest was history. Dan Lloyd looking for the fifth victory from five races in 2018. This is dominance personified, isn't it, in uh, motor racing terms. We do not see this very often. Lewis Kent, actually, remarkably, is still, he's the only one in the top three running in the 50-second bracket still. He's still running within one second of his previous best lap. And that's really interesting because you look at uh, uh, the time drop-off for the rest of the cars towards the front of the field, and Lewis Kent there in the Hyundai is still going as quickly as ever, so that bodes well. Clearly, he's uh, figured out how to look after his tyres a little bit better now. He will come home, it looks like, in third place in this race, but the race victory is going to go to Dan Lloyd for the fifth time in 2018. Ollie Taylor will, if anything, be even happier with second place in the debut of the FK7 Civic with Lewis Kent coming home in third. Now, fourth on the timing screen, we've got Jessica Beckman because Josh Price has slowed. Josh Price has slowed on the last lap. Now, is that damage? Is it a puncture? Josh Price, for whatever reason, drops down to ninth place on the last lap. So Jessica Beckman gets fourth place, which is her best finish of the year now by two positions. And Stuart Lyons, likewise in fifth, gets his best finish of the year. So lots of feel-good stories down the field. We're about to turn things up even louder with the reverse grid race two. This grid is based on each driver's second fastest time from qualifying with the top 10 reversed. So here's how they line up for round six of the championship. Get ready for plenty of overtaking. Now though, let's hand you back to your race commentator. Carl Swift and Stuart Lyons make up the front row of the grid as the red lights go out after a very short hold. It's a good start made by Josh Price there from third on the grid. Stuart Lyons goes backwards. Can Carl Swift hang on to the lead up towards Paddock Hill for the first time? Price goes to the outside. I think that Swift will hang on. Ollie Taylor's had another really good start, but Dan Lloyd, not a particularly swift one. Look at Lewis Kent. 
Lewis Kent around the outside of Josh Price for second place and towards Drew as he's skating around and the braking. He's very, very wide right out onto the runoff area on the outside of the track and Price goes back through. So Swift leads, Price second, Kent third, Jessica Beckman fourth, lines down to fifth and here comes Ollie Taylor. Look, he goes past his teammate Finley Crocker who in turn has Dan Lloyd trying to get through. Now Ollie could do with Finley doing him a favour here and just uh, trying to get in between he and Dan Lloyd. Taylor goes through but Dan Lloyd will be on the outside line into the next corner. He's late on the brakes. Can Crocker fight back? He will go for it if he can. He's back up the inside of Dan Lloyd. This is risky stuff for the championship leader. Out on the outside line. Coming out of clearways. They're still side by side. And Andreas Beckman is right behind them as well. So Taylor's gone through. Can Lloyd go through as well? At front of the field it's Swift from Price. From Kent from Beckman from Lines. Taylor running through in six. Seventh place is Dan Lloyd. And Andreas Beckman goes on the inside of uh, Finney Crocker as well. Oh Taylor sideways over the curb. And Lloyd goes around the outside of him. Phenomenal move from Dan Lloyd. He picks up another position. And that possibly was the most important position that he'll pick up because that was Ollie Taylor and he all weekend long has been Dan's nearest rival. Lloyd still has an awful lot of work to do though as he now closes in on the back of Stuart Lyons. Stuart's never backwards and coming forwards. He won't want to give this place up without a fight as Jessica Beckman goes up the inside of Lewis Kent and takes third place away. Jessica Beckman wants a podium and she wants it now and she's into third place and she will now set off after the leading two who are still swift ahead of Price. Beckman third, yes, hangs on to it. Look at them skating around though. That cement doesn't need to panic bend. That is really starting to cause trouble. Here comes Lloyd up the inside of Lyons looking for that fifth position. I think he's going to get it. Can Finley Crocker follow him through? Uh, Stuart Lyons gets eased out onto the wider side of the road. But no, Crocker can't make the move stick. So another place gained uh, by Dan Lloyd. Into Graham Hill Bend. Next target is Lewis Kent. Now, Lewis Kent, one of the hardest drivers to pass on the circuit because even if you do get past him, he'll try and fight straight back at the next corner. Carl Swift, though, doing exactly what he promised us on the grid. He is defending this lead for all he's worth, stopping the car almost in the middle of the corner to try and stop Josh Price getting the run on the exit of the turn. Josh is right with him, though, as Dan Lloyd makes his move on Lewis Kent. This is for fourth place now for Dan. The march towards the front continues. Lewis Kent will try and get back in line in front of Stuart Lyons, if at all possible, but Stuart is late on the brakes, and Kent, uh, oh, he turns. Yeah, I didn't think he wanted to turn in. He did turn in on Stuart Lyons, and Stuart decided that it was uh, a better idea just to back out of that before there was contact. So it is now a West Coast Racing third and fourth. And there's the uh, the third West Coast Racing car, Andreas Beckman, dicing away with Ollie Taylor. They may have traded a bit of paint there up at Druid, but Beckman of the Andreas variety not really having a great weekend here. Obviously had that damage incurred at the start of race one, which uh, sort of hindered the rest of his race. And uh, then uh, starting down the back in race two, he's not really made that much progress. Crocker there, chasing after Stuart Lyons now as they go up towards the right hander at Clearways. Lewis Kent running wide in front of them, and so Lyons will come back at him, get back up the inside, coming out through the pit straight. And Finley will try and uh, find a gap through as well, if it's all possible. That Hyundai's nice quick in a straight line, though. They're actually fairly evenly matched, but you can see Kent just starting to pull back a length or so. Outside line into Paddock, Lyons on the inside, and Crocker now dives on the inside as well. They're all going to meet in the middle, and Lewis Kent had to hang out wide so as to avoid contact. And so I think that Lyons will go back through, and so too. Yes, will Finley Crocker. Carl Swift is still leading the race. This has been a, a remarkable performance um, from the Northerner, who is in his first season of uh, proper touring car racing, if you like. He's done some uh, one-make tin top stuff in the past. As Jess Beckman, well, something happened there up at Clearways. Jess Beckman has lost uh, third place to Dan Lloyd, and Lloyd is now going for second on Josh Price. What on earth happened there? So Lloyd has gone past two cars in one, but it looked as though there might have been a bit of a hold-up of a clearway. And now Carl Swift's got a real test of his nerves and his defensive ability now. Dan will be prepared to sort of take his time over this, but uh, at the same time, he knows that he's got some quick cars behind him. Carl Swift knows that he's got that to his advantage, but Lord gets on the inside into Graham Hill Bend, and that was a peach of a move. Swift comes back at him, though. Great stuff from Carl Swift. He's got the inside line down towards Surtees, and this could be really risky stuff for Dan Lloyd. Does he dare run around the outside? No, he doesn't. Great stuff from Carl Swift. He's back into the race lead. Price is now on the tail. Oh, they're all bumping and boring him into the braking zone, but Swift gets the Cooper back in front. Late jink up the inside there for Dan going down into Graham Hill Bend. He ran a bit deep on the exit and Swifty got the brilliant run on the exit of the corner. So Swift still lead from Lloyd second, Josh Price third, Jessica Beckman fourth, Stuart Lyons in fifth from uh, Finley Crocker in sixth, the right back with them now as well. Crocker around the outside of uh, Stuart Lyons. That might work. So it gives him the inside line down towards Graham Hill Bend. There's no attack for the lead, but there is a change for fifth position as Finley Crocker continues to make his way up towards the sharp end of the grid. 
back out of Graham Hill to have the Cuba straight, dabbing on the brakes. Oh, look at Carl Swift all over the place through left, left hander at Surtees, well over 90, nearly 100 miles an hour through there in race trim. But Carl Swift, thus far, we're only seven minutes into this 30 minute race, I must admit, but he is, uh, he's done a better job of keeping Dan Lloyd behind than anyone else has managed to do all season. Into Paddock Hill Bend, they're about to go though, and Dan is more than close enough to throw one up the inside if he wishes. He's it safe though, goes to the wide line on the way in, hoping to try and get the cutback on the exit, which he doesn't do actually. Swift, despite going in on such a tight line, got really good speed out of paddock. I'll tell you what, that Cupra is driving really well. We said that they, they've got a good race uh, setup on that car, they didn't bother looking at a qualifying setup, instead, focusing on the long run speed for these 30 minute races. And uh, so. That, that is clearly working well because the car has a good balance, it's very drivable, and Carl Swift is a good driver. He's maybe not someone that um, most people will have uh, come across, but he's, he's done a lot of tin top racing at club level in the UK, and, uh, well, put him in a TCR car. He's very competitive, so too is Jess Beckman, who dives on the inside of Josh Price and puts him out into the gravel. And Josh, has uh, that damaged the car, or is that just a return of the problems from earlier? Josh Price appears to be losing pace. Jessica Beckman, though, is back onto the podium, and Finley Crocker, looking for his first ever podium in TCR, CR race is right with her. Oh, Carl Swift was a bit wide there through Paddock, and there was almost contact with Dan Lloyd as he ran into the back of him. Crocker's wide in the background as well. That cement dust is causing absolute carnage. Paddock Hill Bend, but Dan Lloyd trying to get around the outside of Swift and Druid. Is Swift going to show him the edge of the road on the exit? No, he leaves Lloyd plenty of space. Gentlemanly driving there from Carl Swift, and Lloyd goes through, but can Carl come back at him on the exit of Graham Hill Bend? I wonder there's damage to the back of Dan Lloyd's car, so he's had contact with somebody, but this time around, Lloyd has made it through. Oh, Swift with a wheel on the grass there as he tries to wrestle the car through. 30s. This is phenomenal racing, but you do sense that Dan Lloyd might just start to pull a bit of a gap now. Oh, Crocker! Finley Crocker loses the rear of the car and, well, miraculously, finds the one bit of tarmac runoff area that's available there at Clearways, but that's a shame. Josh Price's race appears to be done, unfortunately. He's out of the car, the helmet's off. Back with the Stuart Lyons and Andreas Beckman squad. Well, this is for fourth position. They seem fairly evenly patched at the moment, Stuart Lyons and Andreas Beckman. Oh, the inside goes Jessica Beckman! Oh, no, into the side of Carl Swift. And Carl Swift gets ed edged out to the edge of the road. And Jessica Beckman, well, she was coming through there, whether Carl liked it or not, and she takes over second place. This is the fight for the final step of the podium, and it's uh, an intra-team fight because we've got uh, both of the Maximum Motorsport cars together now, Carl Swift and Stuart Lyons, and then throw in Andreas Beckman for guaranteed action. Andreas Beckman has been on the podium before, uh, but not yet this weekend, and he has lost second place in the championship to Ollie Taylor as a result. Ollie, though, in this race, is running down in seventh, so every place that Andreas can gain is a benefit for him in the championship, but he's up the inside of Stuart Lyons there. This would be for fourth place, but we've been here before, remember, Beckman thought he made the move, stick up there a few laps ago, only for Stewart to come right back at him. This time, though, Stewart is on the outside line, heading towards Paddock Hill Bend. Barely evenly matched in a straight line, similar shaped cars as well, of course, the Golf and the Cupra, and it will be the Golf that goes through on the way into Paddock. Stewart thinks about fighting back on the exit. Could we get a West Coast Racing 1-2-3? One, one, it's been on the cards all year, and they just haven't quite been able to do it. Well, they're 1-2-4 at the moment, and there's one man standing in their way, and that man, with the unenviable job of trying to keep the third West Coast Racing car off the podium, is Carl Swift. But if ever there was a man who's capable of doing it, it's Carl Swift, as we saw from that spectacular defensive job that he did to keep Dan Lloyd at bay in the early stages of the race, he will not give in, and if he can get a podium, that would mean the world to Carl, who, uh, prior to uh, running with Maximum Motorsport, was basically running that car on his own. And uh, that, of course, is one of the joys of TCR racing, is that once you've got the car, you can run it on your own. And because there is a spending cap, and uh, it's not just a case of the, the richest teams spending all the money and making their car the quickest, um, you, can, you can run a team, a small family-run team, um, and be just as competitive as a West Coast Racing or a Pyro Motorsport. And, He's a real fighter. He was a bit wide there, though, at Druids. Oh, there's contact with Andreas Backman. Wants to oh, no, damage! Damage to Beckman's car. Damage rear left suspension. And I don't think Andreas knows it. He's still going quickly, but there's definitely some damage to the rear left corner of the car. The tyre is rubbing heavily on the bodywork. And Carl Swift, well, now, which way does he go? He goes to the left. Stuart Lyons goes to the right. Andreas, you've got to turn right now, and surely the car won't be able to turn right through clearways. He's going to try. He's, he's keeping on going, but that car is going to have to make its way into the pit lane, surely. No! And 
Andreas Beckman, well, he's continuing on his way, but I think he realised he has to back out of it. But that was all very unfortunate. He got to the inside of Carl, who had run wider for Druids, and then the two just merged on the exit of the corner. There's the contact. Well, Andreas dished it out first, and then lent on Carl on the exit of the corner. And there's only so many times you can do that. The rear suspension on a, a touring car is notoriously susceptible to damage. Beckman's car is in, and his race surely is done. The West Coast Racing Squad will have a look at the rear left corner. Oh, no! Oh, Carl Swift! Carl Swift is off, and that looks like a mechanical problem. Oh, that is heartbreaking for Carl Swift, who was running so well, led the early part of the race, was running in third place with only five minutes to go, and he is out of the race. Stuart Lines is now third, and Howard Fuller's got a genuine shot now at taking a podium finish. He's right on the tail of the remaining Cupra. Four minutes and 20 seconds left, and Howard Fuller is arriving with some real speed. Carries good speed out of Paddock Hill Bend, Towards Druids, what can he do? I'm absolutely good for Carl Swift, but uh, for either Stuart Lyons or Howard Fuller, this would be an amazing result. Howard's on the inside. Oh, look at them leaning on each other, leaning on each other. Howard Fuller trying everything he can to try and get into third place. Stuart defending the inside line to Graham Hill Bend. Howard looking for the comeback on the exit of the corner. Gets his nose alongside almost. Is he up alongside with Sergis? I don't think he is. Howard Fuller has not yet had a podium position. He was fifth and fourth at Silverstone, and of course finished down in tenth in race one today. He and Stuart Lyons, both after their first ever TCR podium. Here is, uh, here's what happened to Carl Swift. He's out of Graham Hill Bend, and it just lets go. It just lets go, and that, I'm afraid, looks rather expensive for, uh, for Carl Swift. And Howard Fuller goes third. Howard Fuller this time around has done it. He is into a podium position, and can he hold on to it now? Can he pull away uh, from uh, Stuart Lyons to hold on to third place? It's been a remarkable turnaround, this, from Howard Fuller. From 10th place after a first lap spin in race one. Well, here's how he did it. Similar story to last lap, I think. Stuart Lyons ran wide, and this time it was a little cleaner. We had the obligatory bit of Tory car contact, but Howard Fuller did go through and into a podium place. Dan Lloyd, remember him, he's leading the race. It will be a sixth win of 2018 for Dan Lloyd. And it's a one-two for West Coast Racing with Jess Beckman in second. Howard Fuller comes home an ecstatic third and a fighting fourth place for Stuart Lyons. Ollie Taylor, incidentally, will come home in a fifth position and Darrell Wilson sixth. I don't know what happened to Carl at the end, but gutted for him, he put up a mega fight. Really tough. <laughs> I thought I had him into Graham Hill. I put a late move on him and managed to get the cut back. So I had to sort of settle and do it all again. So at the end, I had all sorts of noises happening and scraping with bodywork. So every lap I was thinking, oh, I'm puncture, but managed to get away with it. So yeah, it's great. That was an inspired, inspired second. Well done. Thank you. I had a quite good start, and then I was behind a lot of drivers, but I knew I was faster, so I had to overtake as fast as I could because there were so many drivers behind me. So, But in the end, I overtook them, and I got a gap, so I'm so happy. It means everything to me. My goal this year was to get a podium, and now I got this. I'm so happy. I know we got a little bit lucky with some people tripping over each other, but you know we all we all have the same opportunity. But when I saw my pit board for P5 and the guys in front of me are tripping over each other, I thought, you know, we really got this, and I just wanted to save some tyres at the end. But I threw caution to the wind and just went for it, so I'm really happy. Before we go, let's take a quick look at the championship table following today's events. With six of the 14 rounds complete, this is how it now looks at the top of the standings. Well, that's it for us here at Brands Hatch for another weekend of TCR UK. We'll see you next time at Castle Coombe in Wiltshire for round seven and eight. We hope you join us.